Feeding our babies is supposed to come naturally. We see images of cooing babies and smiling moms and doting grandmas and expect that to be us. We don't see all the struggle that goes into every decision that seems so high stakes at the time. We don't expect all the leaking, the engorgement, the deciding to take a break. We don't expect all the judgment, whether we breastfeed or bottle feed or pump or don't. Or maybe we do expect all those things and it comes smooth sailing. But what I have encountered as a doula, a childbirth educator, and a lactation professional is that when I tell people what I do, the stories flow out naturally. And I love hearing them. I hope you do too. I'm your host, Lo. Welcome to the Milk Making Minutes. I started the Milk Making Minutes because I'm passionate about supporting breastfeeding people. But more importantly, I knew that hearing real people tell real stories would benefit both the storytellers and the listeners. I had this idea for three years before I launched. I asked so many people how I should begin, and Anchor came up repeatedly as the easiest way to launch a podcast. And I have not been disappointed. If you are passionate about a topic and have wanted to start a podcast, you can use Anchor to record and distribute your podcast. It's easy to use. You can use the editing tools right from the platform. You can distribute your podcast episodes seamlessly to listening platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts right from Anchor. And the best part is, it's free. And the tech support has been great too. Go to anchor.fm or download the app right to your phone to get started on your great podcast idea. Hi, this is Lo of the Milk Making Minutes. I'm coming to you with a quick hit episode about why the birthing setting matters when it comes to setting yourself up for breastfeeding success. So on episode that just came out last week, my guest Chelsea described two very different breastfeeding experiences. One was after she gave birth at a hospital and one was after she gave birth at a birthing center. And in the hospital, she received very little support. Essentially, she was just asked by the staff, everything going good? And she said, I think so. And then she was just kind of left to figure it out on her own. And then at the birthing center, she had people around her supporting her, making sure that she really was feeling good about breastfeeding. And then in episode 23, that's coming out next week, my guest described being in a hospital system where uh, she had to wait three and a half months to receive lactation support because the lactation team was not available when she gave birth. And then she signed up and was on a wait list. And then by that time, it had been so long that she really wasn't able to ever establish a good latch. But what can you do? Not everybody is going to opt for going to a birthing center or to have a home birth. But even if you're giving birth within a hospital system, you can prepare yourself by knowing what supports are offered. So call your hospital, call the floor we will be delivering, call the postpartum floor and ask if there is a lactation team, ask what the qualifications of the lactation lactation team are. If they are international board certified lactation consultants, IBCLCs, if not, what are their qualifications? What sorts of lactation training have they had to make sure that they are offering up-to-date evidence-based information? And is it one person offering lactation support for all the families birthing in your hospital? Is it a team of people offering support? And do they work shifts so that there's always somebody there or are they only there Monday through Friday, nine to five, because you don't want to be in a situation where you're giving birth on a Friday evening, nobody's there. And by the time you check out on a Sunday evening or a Monday morning, you have not been seen by the lactation team because there was nobody there over that long weekend. So just know what's available. And then if once you've heard what's available, if you feel like, uh, I'm not sure if there's enough support to really set me up for success, you can decide that you're either going to look around and see what other options are available to you, um, what other hospitals are available or birthing centers that are available that will offer better support, postpartum support to make sure you're, you're really set up for breastfeeding success. Or you can just know that you're going to prenatally hire a lactation consultant so maybe even do a prenatal consult with them 
so that you feel really prepared heading into giving birth. And then you'll have that person's number. You're not going to have to do the work of finding them once you have a hungry baby in front of you that you're feeling stressed about feeding. And if you're having any difficulty at all, once you give birth, you'll be able to call them or your partner will be able to call them and they'll already have all of your intake information. And so it'll be really easy just to get started. So I hope that's helpful as you're thinking about setting yourself up for success for breastfeeding and how the setting can impact your breastfeeding outcomes. I hope that you listen to episode 23 where you hear Elisa's full story of breastfeeding and how the setting impacted her breastfeeding experience and how also the culture of her family impacted her experience and how having an undiagnosed tongue tie impacted her experience. If you are looking for more support to help you along the way to answer your questions, you can join the Milk Making Minutes community on Facebook. It's a growing group and I'd be happy to have you in the group to provide more support.